So there are several ways to store your meat in the fridge and we're going to kind of go from what is ideal in an unusually perfect scenario to what I do and what I've personally done in the past and I'm going to try to cover every single possible way you could do this on the carnivore diet. So ideal circumstance is you get the animal freshly slaughtered, you bring it home, you cut it up into pieces and if you want to store that you could hang it in the fridge, you could put it on a rack in the fridge uh, like this or you could wrap it in parchment paper. That avoids any negative things of uh, plastic wrap or paper towel or you know just any negative connotation associated with plastic. The con to that is it dries out a little bit. Um, you need a dedicated meat refrigerator. Uh, it, it needs to be super cold like 33, 34 degrees as cold as possible. So if you do have whole cuts and you have a dedicated meat fridge then your best bet just keep it in the fridge on a rack super cold whether you wrap it in parchment paper doesn't really matter it will dry out a little bit on the outside but that's you know if you cook it that doesn't matter and you could also just wet it a little bit when you, when you go to eat it with some water so now let me show you what I actually do in most cases so this is a ribeye primal and this is wrapped in paper towel I did this yesterday what this does is it dries out the surface it forms a very flush tight fit and the only way you will get fresher than this is if you use a cryovac and even then this forms like the tightest seal possible um, and then what I do is I just I take it out I cut through the paper towel I cut off the steak that I want and then and then I just put the paper towel back on and put this back in the fridge this is easy in a sense you don't have to keep rewrapping it in plastic you don't have to keep wasting resources it keeps it super duper fresh um, if the paper towel sticks you just wet it and let it sit for a minute and then take the paper towel off if you have something small that's chopped up that fits in a bowl of steak tartare, liver, I don't know. You put it in a bowl, you put plastic wrap on top, and you press down very flush. Again, you don't have to put the plastic wrap on top if you're afraid of plastic, but you can definitely, uh, it's definitely going to dry out on the top and it will, again, you need a dedicated meat fridge so it doesn't pick up flavors or give flavors to other foods. Here's the third way of doing it. So. I took a steak, I wrapped it up super duper tight in plastic wrap, and then I put it in a plastic bag. This is how I would freeze my meat. And again, you could also use parchment paper. To me, that's fine. Parchment paper is the alternative if you're afraid of plastic. With plastic, it's easier to just get a really tight seal on it, as well as uh, a little bit easier to fold it up. This is how I thaw things out in the fridge overnight. So. I took them out, like I had some beef fat wrapped in plastic here, and then I had some uh, beef testicles wrapped in plastic, and I just put it on a dish in the fridge, it sits overnight, it's nice and soft now, it's thawed out. Uh, I'll try to go through this within a few days. Um, after I eat this, you know, I'll put the beef fat just on a plate in the fridge, and I'll wrap a little bit of plastic wrap over the plate. That's not necessarily touching the beef fat, just to keep you know, other flavors from getting on it, keep flies off of it, things like that. These were my steak leftovers from the night before. Uh, what I would either do is, you know, I just wrap it in plastic completely on top. Sometimes, honestly, I just drape a paper towel over it and leave it on the counter. Um, or you can just put it on a bowl back in the fridge. That's, that's really what I like doing with leftovers. The best way, just plastic wrap over so the plastic doesn't touch the meat, but it keeps any flies or any kind of like smells from getting on it. Here I have some salmon roe that came vacuum sealed. The reason I am showing this is because this is how we get a lot of our food. If, you know, most of the time your food is going to come in plastic unless you're getting it directly from the slaughterhouse. So you're trying to avoid packaging it in plastic, but chances are it's touched plastic at some point. Um, unless, as I said, you're doing it yourself. Eggs can go, if you buy eggs in the supermarket and they're refrigerated, they go back in the fridge. If from a farm, they can be, you know, kept out on the counter. So the eggs will last maybe, I mean, if you get them straight from the farm, eggs are good for probably like a month or two. And, and that depends on your histamine tolerance. And you guys want to Google histamine tolerance. That's why we're talking about how long this meat lasts. And just to show my freezer, you know, and a lot of times I don't necessarily get a tight seal. Like here I have some lamb heads that are just in a bag that are frozen that then they'll try to use within a week or two. Same thing with marrow bones. Marrow bones I just keep in a bag. Here I have some more beef fat and, and the beef testicles just wrapped really tight in plastic. So this is in my garage. This is my dedicated meat fridge. And I'm not using it yet because I haven't, um, 
I haven't bought a whole animal yet, but uh, this is just going to be meat. So if you have something like this, then you can do, do what I said earlier. Uh, a lot of you guys are asking me about dry aging and stuff. Um, I'll do that. That's a separate topic. I don't want to half-ass that. That requires certain humidity, uh, certain filtration systems, so that gets a little complicated. Uh, if you want to just hang meat in your fridge or just put it on a rack like I said earlier, you get the fridge as cold as possible and just put it on a rack or put it in the fridge. That's all you have to do. This is my big freezer. Uh, here I have some, this is some cryovac beef fat that I got. Um, you know, it's not too high quality, but this is how it comes. So that's, that's that. Uh, my salmon row is in here too. You know, my salmon, like some of the vacuum seals broke and they got some frost all over them, but that's just how it is. I got my marrow bones in here too, just a frozen marrow bones in a bag. So generally speaking, if you freeze something or you refrigerate something and it's not cryovac you want to use it generally as quickly as possible. So in the fridge, two to three weeks, generally, uh, for pretty much anything if it's stored properly in a cold fridge. If it's cryovac it might last a little longer if you don't open it. And in the case of like cryovac stuff in the freezer, it'll last, you know, two, three years, literally. Uh, cryovac in the freezer. If it's just wrapped nice in the plastic, six months to two years, and if it's wrapped poorly and already has like free and like it's getting frost in it, I would use try to use it within a few months. Uh, there's a big difference between like if you go to the supermarket and you buy some ground beef. If you're buying meat from the supermarket, you know at, at a week and a half you're kind of pushing it. Uh, at least in my experience, a lot of the meat I buy is directly from purveyors. Um, it's sourced frozen cryovac. It's super fresh when I get it. Uh, at least not maybe not super fresh. Maybe it's technically old, but. Uh, in regards to its exposure to oxygen, it's relatively fresh. So, um, I'll show you guys, you know, when I get that animal in the future and other things that I do. Hopefully, I have helped some of you guys out. This is from my experience working in a couple different steakhouses in the city, as well as just experimenting anecdotally in general. Um, here's my daily makeup check for you guys. Uh, no, no, my eyebrows are normal, you know, nothing on them, nothing on my face, there's nothing on my hands. Uh, you know, you guys are driving crazy. I'm wiping my face like a nut job, nothing on my shirt, no makeup, there's nothing in my hair, like I don't have product in my hair, like now my hair smells like meat, but I don't have any product in my hair. Uh, if you guys want to support me, you know, hey, follow my YouTube channel, check out my, I'm trying to be more, i sorry I didn't post on Twitter yesterday, I'll make sure to post twice today. Uh, I'll, I'm trying to be more active on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you got, uh, there's also some like podcasts and some other YouTube channels I was on there in the comments. Uh, but above all, guys, if you can just please share my channel with a buddy, tell them how hey this Italian guy looks like a clown and he wears makeup and he's crazy. He likes meat. Uh, I don't know. Tell them something that fits them. If they want to follow carnivore, tell them hey this guy knows a lot about nutrients. If they're uh, if they like um, cute, uh, Aladdin looking Italian guys, tell them hey. Uh, are you looking to meet a Disney prince? If they like making fun of people, say, hey, look at this guy's eyebrows, you know? So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, this is a re-upload. I realize I missed a lot of details in my other video. And, uh, I, and not that I missed them. I, I was planning on answering them in the comments, but uh, I just didn't think in hindsight how important it would be to mention those things.